Welcome back to SC4 Crochet on YouTube. This is part two of the Loopy Crochet Jacket tutorial. So if you missed part one, you want to pause and go back there. So the first thing I want to do is create my back panel. Now, in order to get my stitch count for my back panel, it's going to be half of the total width of the jacket. Now the other half, you want to split in half again in order to get your quarter panels. That's going to be your front two panels. So for my stitch count, I was doing the medium jacket with 108 stitches. That means that I'm going to skip the first 27 stitches. That's a quarter of the amount. That's going to be one of my front panels. I'm going to start stitching in that 28th stitch in order to do 54 stitches across for my back panel. And then I should have another 27 stitches skip in order to make my other front panel. Now, another thing to note is when you start your back panel, it's okay to go stitch for stitch on the first row. Essentially, you're creating a new fresh edge, so you don't have to start from the bottom. Um, but then you just want to go back to counting your every five rows for your stitch for stitch half double crochet row, just like you did on the previous in part one. But this is the back panel row count for you. So for my medium jacket, I end up going up a total of 28 rows. And that's 28 rows, not 28 repeats. Now, after your back panel is done, you want to start by making your front panels. And we want to make a angled edge on our front panels. So we are going to do a decrease on one side, and then it's going to be a straight edge on the other side that's next to the armhole. Um, I am starting on my right panel, technically, um, because that's where my yarn left off I didn't disconnect it when I did my back panel and because remember I was talking about the 27 stitches so I'm going to do stitch for stitch to start my 20 my first row of my front panel as well so I'm doing 27 stitches across And I do have my stitch marker in there to show me where my 27th stitch would be so I know where to end. That way I don't overlap with my back panel. And then I'm just gonna turn my work and do row two. Now, where we are right now is at the edge that's gonna line up with our sleeve. So we're going to decrease on the other edge. So with this one being a loop stitch row, we're gonna start with a regular single crochet and then loop stitch across. And then when we make our way to the other end of the jacket, we are going to do a single crochet two together to end this row. And that's how we're going to create the decrease. So row three, we're not gonna decrease. We're just going to go across the same number of stitches. We should be at 26 if you're doing the medium jacket along with me, because we just decreased in the last row. And so I am gonna do my half double crochet correction row though, where I skip my first stitch and then to do two half double crochets in the last stitch. Row four is another decrease on a loop stitch. We're starting again with a single crochet and loop stitching across. And as we make our way to the end of the row with those loop stitches, we're gonna make sure that we single crochet two together at those last two stitches. For me, that brings my stitch count down to 25 for this decrease. The other thing you'll notice is a little bit of stretching between those two stitches where you're connecting your front panel and your back panel. So again, I'm using the same tip that I did before in part one. You just want to fold your project up and use a clip to secure it. And then that way you're not creating as much tension on those connection seams when you're turning your work. So from here, you wanna keep repeating your rows until you're done with your total row count for your right front panel. Again, we're doing the half double crochet rows with no decrease, and we're single crocheting two together at the end of the row for the loop stitch rows. 
in order to decrease on those. Um, and then this is the total row count. I did 28 for mine again because I'm doing the medium jacket. So now I'm moving to my left front panel and I'm putting my stitch marker where I need to start. Just so again, I'm not confusing it with the stitch that I started my back panel on. And I'm just going to refold my project again now that I have my right panel attached so that I have everything in a nice little bundle so that I'm not creating tension as I work on my left panel. So we're gonna start the left front panel the exact same way we started the right front panel. Again, with my medium jacket, I'm doing 27 stitches and we're gonna half double crochet in each stitch across. So no need to do the correction row. left front panel row two starts with the decrease so we're going to single crochet two together at the start of the row and then do our loop stitches across and then in the last stitch we're going to finalize that with a single crochet And now continue to repeat for row three, we're going to do the half double crochet with the correction. So I'm skipping that first stitch and going into the second. I'm gonna half double crochet all the way across with no decrease. And I'm gonna do two half double crochets in my last stitch. And then just continue to repeat, no decrease in your half double crochet rows, single crochet two together at the beginning of the row, and remember your row count for the size you're working on. So now that all of the panels are made, we wanna go ahead and seam these together to make our shoulder seams. So you want to work on the wrong side of the jacket and you're just going to go into the edge of your front panel and insert that hook into the same stitch, the edge stitch of your back panel too. Now I counted across just to make sure that my stitches line up and I know exactly how many I need to go across the back. Again, it's always good just to count your stitches and know exactly where you should end up. But I'm going to attach my yarn and I'm going to seam these together by single crocheting through both panels. And then of course, we're gonna repeat the same process on the other side. Again, I'm keeping up with my stitch count because with this one, I am going to be stitching on the middle part of the panel instead of the end stitch. So I wanna make sure I've counted the number of stitches in so that everything lines up correctly.
So now with both of our shoulders seamed, uh, if we turn it right side out, we now have a nice loopy crochet vest. And keep in mind, if you wanted to recreate this project without the V-neck, you could just make straight panels instead of decreasing on your right and left panel, and that would be a different style of vest. But getting back to our jacket, what we want to do is turn it back on the wrong side, and we're going to seam around the edge of the armhole. This is going to make it easier for us to connect our sleeves on. So I picked the starting point. I didn't want to start right in that middle edge where our seams were connecting, so I just went a few stitches up. I'm just connecting a new strand of yarn, and I'm going to single crochet, one single crochet into each one of the rows. So I'm going back into the original stitch that I connected to first, making a single crochet in that. And then if you look at it, you can see how the stitches, each row, there's one row that goes up and then there's another row that goes down. So that's how I know which row I'm going into so I can go one stitch into each row. But what I noticed is as I went through working into this edge, you can kind of see a spot where it opens up. So if I go into one row, the next row just opens up a hole. So you're just kind of jamming into the side of the row that's raised. But when you do go into that row, the next row, the hole just opens right up. So I hope that makes sense, but that's an easy way to spot which row you're on. Just pay attention to how the rows are rising and falling. And that's how you'll know for sure that you're going into the right stitch. Even if you pick the wrong stitch, as long as you're going one stitch at a time, you should be fine. Now, when you come up to the seam, you wanna be careful. You don't want to make an extra stitch into your seam because that's not a real row. So you're gonna make sure you pick the row before the seam starts and the row after the seam ends. That's gonna be your next panel. And you're gonna go into the side of that. As I work my way down the back panel, you can see this edge looks a little bit different than the panel I was just working on, but you're still looking for the rising and falling rows. What I found when I came to this side is that there's this little loop that's there. So if I go under that loop, then the next stitch just opens right up on the next row. So under the loop and into the next stitch. And again, just find your rhythm. You're just gonna go one stitch into each row as you work your way around. Now here I'm coming down to the bottom part where my back panel ended and my front panel starts. And you wanna be careful because that spot where it opens up, that's not a real stitch, but we kinda of wanna close that up at the same time. So what I'm gonna do is instead of just skipping it or instead of stitching into it, I'm gonna make this a single crochet two together. So this is my last stitch into my panel. And then I'm going into that stitch that kinda of opened up when we connected our panels. So that's why I'm single crocheting two together. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the second stitch. Sorry, that's out of frame. And what this does is it just tightens up that part of the armhole to give it a little bit more structure so that it can stop. And then from here, you just wanna do the last few stitches and then connect to your first stitch with the slip stitch. This is another spot where stitch count is important. Remember, I only did 28 rows on my front panel and 28 rows on my back panel for my medium jacket. So total number of rows that I could have, I should have, is 56. So that should be my stitch count when I'm stitching around the armhole. And I'm gonna repeat the same thing on the other side. The reason why the stitch count is important is this is going to line up with our sleeves. So before we get into the sleeve, I just wanted to show you what it looks like. So first off, you can see on the edge where the wrist is, I didn't do any special edging. I just started the loop stitches. The reason why is because the loops do hang over, but that does bring up a point for you. If you wanna make your sleeve a little bit different where you do have a cuff on the edge, you do have the opportunity to do so. The sleeve itself is not tight, it's tapered. So it's not the same stitch count from the shoulder down to the wrist. But you can see here, I have a lot of room in the jacket. Even though it's not a loose sleeve, there's space in it in case I wanted to wear 
a sweater or something like that underneath the jacket. You actually start this sleeve from the wrist going up. So my ending stitch is the same stitch count as the armhole is that we just worked on. But you can see this traveling seam on the inside of the sleeve, and that is because we work this in the round instead of going back and forth. So we're gonna start this sleeve the same way we started the rest of the jacket, and that's with our foundation half double crochet. Now, of course, I'm working on a medium jacket, so I'm gonna do 32 half double crochets, but again, you can see how much room I had left in my sleeve, so if you want to adjust it, that is completely up to you. We are working our sleeve in the round so when you get to your last half double crochet you just want to join it with the slip stitch into the first half double crochet. Now for row two we're going to turn our work and we do not have to do the single crochet on the edge like we did before. Um, since there's technically no edge because we're working in the round, you're just going to do loop stitches all the way around row two. So we're doing the same stitch count that we started out with on our half double crochet row. For me, that's 32 stitches. And I do like to put a stitch marker in my first stitch of the round. That way I know I've reached the end of the row when I come back around to it. You know I'm doing the pull-up method to come up to my next row instead of chaining up. So that's just a great way to keep track of what your first stitch is. And it helps you with um, when you get to those last few stitches, sometimes they can be hard to find. You just keep up with your stitch count and you'll know where your first stitch is. So here I am making my way to the last few stitches of the row. Again, that last stitch is a little tight. It's kind of hard to see where the stitches meet and where to go into but I know because of my stitch count that's where my last one goes so I'm just going to work that in and then I'm going to move my stitch marker to join So I'm putting my stitch marker back in for a second and removing my hook because I want to go back to that half double crochet foundation row that I made. And you know how you have the tail from when you originally started. I just want to tie that in so that I can close my wrist on the sleeve. So I am just going to go in on the other side, which would have been the last half double foundation that I made and I just pull the tail in through it to make a loop. And then I go back in through the back of the first one to grab the loop and pull it all the way through. And then I just tie the tail off at the end and that's going to close up my wrist. Now row three should be your first increase row. So what we're gonna do is we're going to add in two half double crochets. The way I do this is in my first stitch and in my midpoint stitch, I'm going to do two half doubles in the same stitch. So I chained one up and I just put my first half double crochet in. I'm gonna put another half double crochet in that same stitch. My stitch count for this row is going to go up to 34. So I'm going to keep counting. This is stitch three. 
four. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, and seventeen. So that's my midpoint, right? So that's where I know I need to do my second increase. So 17 is half of 34. That means in the next stitch, I'm gonna put two stitches. So that's 18 and 19. And now I'll just continue stitching across until I reach my end. Again, you can count with me if you like. That's 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, and watch your stitch count. That's going to be 34. All right, and then we'll just slip stitch together. Now, you may notice that there are way too many loop stitches below me <laughs> to be on row three, and you're absolutely right. When I filmed this, my stitch count was wrong, so I didn't do an increase in row three. I didn't do my increase until row five. But I am going to provide the stitch counts for you. I just wanted to make sure I showed you exactly what it looks like when you increase. You are not going to do any increases on your single crochet loop stitch rows, only in the half double crochet rows. I wish that this pattern lined up where it would just be like an increase in every other row, but it doesn't work out that way. Um, you have like a slimmer part that's up from the wrist to the elbow, and then it gets a little bit wider as we make our way to the shoulder. So here are my stitch counts. I'm providing this to you for each row, going all the way back to row one with the wrist, all the way up to your last row for your sleeve. And this should be a total of 60 rows, but I'm only giving you the half double crochet repeat row uh, because that is the only one that you're going to have an increase on. Hopefully that does not create too much confusion. Pause the video and continue making your sleeve and then I'll meet you back when we connect it. All right, so this is the end of my sleeve. This is row 60 for me. I'm just finishing up my last few stitches with my loop stitches to finish that row off. And then I am going to slip stitch to join and finish off that row. Now I didn't disconnect my yarn from my sleeve. So what I'm gonna do is with my vest part of my jacket inside out, I'm gonna stuff my sleeve in right side out, if that makes sense. You can see it from the video. So we're inside out on the jacket, right side out on the sleeve. I'm taking my yarn that I left the loop on the sleeve and I'm using that to connect onto my armhole. And I just went straight into the same stitch that I left off on when I did my edging on my armhole. So that's how I'm gonna connect. Now, if you did disconnect your yarn, it's no big deal. You just wanna uh, find a spot to connect it. And I just figured I would pick right back up where I left off. Okay, and we're going to join the sleeve just like we joined the shoulders. So we are just single crocheting in through the armhole and then in through the sleeve as well, joining those two panels together with the single crochet. Now you can feel free to join these together by sewing. You can join them together by slip stitching your stitches together, but this was just easy for me. 
I am just single crocheting the two pieces together. And remember that the, the way I created the pattern for the sleeve, I did it where your 60th row should line up with your stitch count on your panels. So your armhole should be an exact match to the number of stitches for your sleeve. If that does not work out, like if you adjusted your sleeves in some type of way, it's not really a big deal. You just want to try to evenly stitch around the armhole and connect your sleeve. And you just want to make your way stitching all the way around the armhole and all the way around the sleeve and then when you get to your last stitch you're just going to join into the first stitch with another slip stitch and tie off and here we are with our finished jacket with our sleeves all connected you can see that the loops just fade right in from the front panels into the sleeves now what we wanna do is start our edging. Um, we are going back to that pocket that we made and I'm switching my hook out to a smaller hook. I'm gonna bring it down to an H hook, not too far down, but just to create a little bit of a tension on my edging. I'm just going to attach a piece of yarn and I'm just going in, I'm just finding random stitches to go into to edge um, my pocket. It doesn't really matter how many stitches you go if you wanna line them up um, to stitch one into each row that you did. I didn't pay that much attention to it. I just tried to evenly stitch across just to create a finished edge on my pocket. Now I edge my whole pocket with single crochets and then to finish it off, I kind of grab a stitch off to the side on the rope above it and I just slip stitch into that and finish off. And then of course, I'm repeating the same process on the other pocket. So just grab a stitch in there to attach to and then single crochet along the edge of the pocket. All right, finishing up those stitches and then I'm just going to grab a point at the end and slip stitch into that to finish off. All right, so that's the final edging for the pocket. It still is pretty hidden, um, so you don't necessarily have to do this step. I just like to finish off all my edges. Um, and then of course, with the tails that are left over, you wanna grab those and get your sewing needle and you just wanna weave those tails in. So now I want to do edging all the way around the outside of the jacket. So I'm just kind of folding my project up just to show you that I'm working at the bottom edge to start. 
So I am just picking a random midpoint at the bottom of my jacket and I'm connecting my yarn there. I'm still using my smaller hook and I'm just going to work a single crochet around all of the outside edge of the jacket. Now this is really important, um, not just for finishing, but also keep in mind that our pockets are still not seen together. So this is where we're going to seam our pockets as well. So we're creating a nice finishing edge all the way around the jacket. You just wanna to continue to go around. And then when you meet up with your pockets, you wanna make sure that you have your stitches lined up correctly. So you see here, I'm counting off just to make sure that I have the correct join point lined up for my pocket so that I don't accidentally seam that off in the wrong place. And I'm just using my stitch marker to just kind of hold it in place until I get around to it. All right, so just like we did with everything else that we joined together, you're just going to single crochet the two panels together, um, inserting in one side and out of the other side, and then finish off your single crochet. And this is going to seam up the bottom of our pockets. So when you get to the corner, you wanna make sure that you're continuing your edge around. So what I do is I put three single crochets into my corner stitch, and that helps to turn the edge around to the side. Now on this side panel, we're not going into the top of a stitch, so it's a little trickier here to join them, but we're gonna do them the same way we did before. You're just going into the side of the stitch, and because we, you know, your back of your pocket is just a copy of the front of the pocket. So you should be able to line up the knots to meet up with each other so that you know that you're going into the same point on both of the panels. I did not count stitches when I came around to the side of my jacket. I just tried to find consistent points to go in so that my single crochets were evenly spaced. Now, once you reach the end of your pocket, you still want to continue your edging along the side. It's gonna be a little less complicated since you're not joining two panels, but you still want to keep the same technique as far as where you're inserting your hook. The idea is just to keep your spacing consistent as you work your single crochets down your edge. Now I have a lot of footage in here with me doing the edging. Um, I believe this is the point where the front panel starts to decrease. And so I just wanted to kind of show you just to make sure that you're continuing to be consistent with your spacing on your single crochets. I'm still not counting stitches as I'm doing this. I'm just kind of working my way across. If you find that it's easier to find your actual row and count stitches, you're more than welcome to do that. But for me, I just kind of went across and just tried to keep my spacing consistent. And this is the point where my shoulder joins in. So I'm not doing anything special with the stitches here. I'm just going straight into the next stitch and starting across the top of the back panel. And not to be redundant, here is another um, 
little snippet just showing you how I'm doing the side pocket. This is the other side. And the only thing I could see here, even though I'm out of frame for most of it, um, on this side, you can see a little bit better how I'm lining up the two panels where the knots meet up with each other. So you can get an idea of just pinching those two panels together and just trying to go into the same space since I'm not counting stitches. Um, but we're still doing the same logic. We're just kind of inserting our hook in the same space through both panels and then trying to keep our stitches spaced consistently so that we're not um, doing too many single crochets around the edge. And then as we make our way to that bottom edge, when you get to that corner stitch, you just wanna make sure you do three single crochets in the corner in order to turn. And then we'll be back on um, the top of those single, those half double crochet rows so that it'll be easier to stitch in. And as we do those last few single crochets on our bottom edge, we just want to grab our first stitch and slip stitch in order to join those together. The last part of our finishing is just to deal with this open section of our pockets. We have this on both sides. What I'm gonna do is go ahead and thread one of my needles and I'm just going to sew this down to the panel. So I'm just watching what I do here. I am just kind of lining up the stitches so that they look like they're next to each other. And I'm just grabbing the same part of the knot of one half double and going into the knot of the other half double. And I'll just do that all the way up this little seam. So I'm just lining the two stitches up together, going in one and out of the one next to it. And then I knot off each one of my stitches. That's just me to make sure that it doesn't unravel. So I'm gonna put the knot in there and then I'm going to go in one out of the one next to it, make my knot and continue to seam that all the way up until I have that section closed. This was the part, the, the six rows that we did to start the pocket. So we should only have to do those seams for those first six rows. It's just a small little section, but you wanna make sure that you grab it for both of your pockets. And then of course you just wanna weave in your tail so that you don't have that um, strand of yarn kind of sticking out of your project. Uh, while you have your needle out, you just want to do a final inspection of your entire jacket and go all the way around all of your edges and make sure you weave in all of your tails. Um, check all of your seams where you joined your shoulders, where you joined your sleeves. And then also all of the side panels where you may have reattached yarn, you just wanna make sure you weave everything in. Now this part is completely optional, but it does give you a nice finish with all of these loops kind of going all over the place. You may want to steam over your jacket. If you have a steamer, that's great. But for me, I just use my steam iron and it works just fine. I just hit the blast button, just make the steam over each panel and then kind of smooth over my loops so that they lay the way I want them to. And if you don't have a mannequin, you can lay it flat and it works just the same. All right, and here I am in the finished jacket. Hit that like button if you made it this far. I appreciate the love. 
Also hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. I'll be back with some more tutorials soon. If you have any questions, any comments for this project, make sure you leave them in the comment box and I'll reply really quickly for you. And thanks so much again for watching. I'll see you soon.